Now, New York's number one news, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you. Well, to help sort everything out on Wall Street, we are joined now by Richard Bregman. He's an investment advisor. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Thank another you, day on another wild day on Wall Street. Another we heard day. from Carolina's package just a few moments mm -hmm. ago. They had huge gains uh, yesterday, but they were virtually wiped out with the opening of the bell. How? I mean, why the wild fluctuations over just so many days, and how low do you think we'll go? Well, the fluctuations are investors' reaction to a flow of news that has just been unprecedented, starting with the debt ceiling debate, the S&P downgrade, then the Fed saying we'll keep interest rates low, we'll intervene, and then today the French bank concern over uh, Euro sovereign European debt and what that effect might be. And investors uh, are reacting to what they perceive to be bad news, then good news, then bad news, reassuring. And that's, that's why we've had these swings. And it so happens that it's been in, in the last few days. And so it's been a roller coaster. So yeah. how low do you think you will go? How low do I think we'll go? Yeah. <laughs> a big question. <laughs> that's the big question. Uh, there's no way to know for sure. Uh, we, we all would like to know the answer to the question, but uh, the future is always uncertain. But it could go down more, or it might stabilize. Mm. And that's the beauty of Not investing. That's good news. Well, what can Washington do? What can the international business community do? Is there like a silver bullet out there that can stay Stabilize the situation. Yeah, the silver bullet so far has been the central banks of the, the G7, Federal Reserve. They've been acting in a coordinated manner to uh, reassure investors they will keep liquidity, which means they'll uh, make sure that there's money in the markets. They'll keep interest rates low. The Fed, in an unprecedented announcement, said that it will keep interest rates low for the next two years. Uh, that's reassuring to investors. It's designed to help bring the economy out of the doldrums. Um, they've been doing it for quite some time now, so right. uh, okay. it's not clear. It's not clear what the effects will be. We'll see that down the road. That's turning a ship. That's going to happen over time, but it's not a. It's not happening it's right not now. A day, right. It's not a day. It's not. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, Richard Bregman, thank Thanks. you so much for joining us, and thank we you, want Charlotte. to remind thank people you, there's still deals out there. <laughs> there are. There okay. are. Prices are down. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, now to Wall Street and the Dow plunging yet again. In fact, all of the gains from yesterday's big rally wiped out. The Dow finished down 519 points, the ninth steepest decline in Dow history. Investors today refocused their attention on the weakening economy, and that led to the staggering sell-off. I would just use reporter Carolina Lead is in the newsroom with more tonight. Carolina. Well, Liz, call it Wall Street whiplash. Yesterday, the markets made a mighty climb, but within minutes of the opening bell this morning, stocks plummeted, refusing to stop or slow down for the rest of the day. From the opening bell to the closing bell, this Wall Street roller coaster ride left many investors feeling a little queasy. As if investors needed a reminder that one day doesn't necessarily make a difference, stocks plunged more than 500 points at day's end, following yesterday's 429 point gain. So we asked investment advisor Richard Bregman, why are we seeing this and when will it stop? Tomorrow, nobody knows. We'll see. Uh, tomorrow will be a reaction to today. The Federal Reserve pledged to keep its key interest rate at nearly zero for two years. But it also had a dim outlook on the economy, calling it considerably slower than it expected. So the biggest one-day gain since March 2009 took a terrible turn. Do not panic. That's the first thing. These events, the news events, are so-called unprecedented, but the market movements are not. We've had these types of market movements. We've had them as recently as two or three years ago. Besides weak U.S. economic growth, investors are worried about Europe's debt troubles, rising inflation in China, and slower growth in other less developed countries. Liz.